Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thank you for logging in um, to watch our SEM parents meeting. So I'm Jo McManus, I'm the new uh, Assistant Head SENCO here at St Monica's. Uh, I'm Mrs Fraser, I'm the new SEN manager here at St Monica's. Hello everyone. Hello, so we are um, obviously new members of staff here and what we are looking to do is we're trying to work with parents to ensure that all children uh, with SEN get the right provision within school. So what we're going to do is hopefully over the next year is do these meetings once every half term just to give you an update of what we're doing, where we're going um, to inv actively involve you. If, for example, COVID-19 does decide that it's going to go, we will move this so that it is a live meeting where you can come into school and then there'll be opportunities for questions and answers. If throughout this you have got any questions, by all means, please write them down and just send us an email and we will respond to those for you um, if you've got any questions about anything. So just to give you a little bit of an overview so you know as parents where we're at in St Monica's with SEN compared to schools nationally in terms of how many children we have on the register. So currently here at St Monica's we've got 12.6% of our children are SEN. Nationally that's 14.6 so we are um, a little bit uh, below national in terms of children with SEN. Of SEN support we've only got uh, we've got 10.4% nationally, that's 11.7. And then children with educational health care plans, again, we're below national with 1.7%. So that is a total of 19 students with educational health care plans within the school. So we are looking at doing a bit of education with parents so that parents understand how and when we decide to put children on the SEM register, at what point we take them off at what point we put them on. Now a healthy register within school is one where children are actively moving on and off the register according to where their needs are and how we address their needs. I am doing some education with the teachers because ultimately SEN is the responsible responsibility of the classroom teacher to ensure that that child's needs are being met in the classroom and it's really really important that if they need reasonable adjustments that the teacher is able to do that appropriately and that's through something what we call high quality teach first. Every child is entitled to high quality teach first within the classroom and as an SEN department we make sure that those teachers know what the child's need is so that they can put those high quality teach first in and I'll tell you how we're moving forward on that here at St Monica's. We also want to make sure that children are not on the SEM register if they are not receiving something above and beyond their peers. So if a child has for example something like autism or they're on the register for something like dyslexia, but their needs can be met through high quality teach first. They don't necessarily need to be on the register. They only need to go on the register if those needs cannot be met in the classroom by the classroom teacher. So that's when they might need something above and beyond their peers. So for example, if they are dyslexic and they need to come out for a small group intervention because they can't, they can't access the high quality teach first. At that point, we put them on the register. If after a short term intervention, they they are able to access and, and we've made improvements, then we can take them off. So that's the only reason we need to have, have them on according to the code of practice. And it's really, really important that we don't separate SEN children off from their peers. It's really, really important that we make sure it's inclusive practice and we keep them in the classroom as much as we can because the best place that they learn is in the classroom with the peers and with the teacher but it's about making sure that those reasonable adjustments those adaptions are put in place so that they can can access the classroom so we here we and and, and everywhere we split all children's needs according to um split the register according to their needs. So we've got communication and interaction. So any child that has any form of speech and language need, any form of um, autism, Asperger's, they would fall under this category. You have children that might have cognition and learning needs. That would also be children where they might have struggle with uh, reading, they might struggle with maths, or it might be that they have something like dyslexia, dyscalculia. 
We have children with social, and emotional and mental health needs. That is not children around behaviour. That is children that would struggle emotionally within the classroom. And then finally, we've got our sensory and physical needs. So that's your hearing impaired, your visually impaired. And we, we categorise children into those categories in order to be able to meet their needs appropriately. So then what we do is we make sure that the uh, children are either SEN support or they have an educational health care plan. An educational health care plan doesn't just happen overnight. That's extensive amount of work that goes into that where the needs can't necessarily be met by, by small group interventions. And, and parents that have children with educational health care plans will know the lengthy process that takes for, for those children to get that. But every child should have, that's on the SEM register, a set of outcomes that we are working to as a school. And those outcomes are, are there to ensure that those needs are met. Um, and, and that could be short term outcomes. It could be long term outcomes. It's not about how many hours a child gets. It's about the outcomes and how we get that. I'm very, very much about creating young, independent young people and preparing them for adulthood. So even if a child's in year seven, we need to make sure they're as in independent as possible so that they can move to the next step steps in their education. Sticking a TA on one to one with them is not allowing them to become independent. It's about using the having those outcomes to find the right strategies and the right actions in place. So what I have done is I have built um, a graduated approach for parents. This will go on the website so you'll be able to see this in much clearer how the process in what we would do to ensure that your child's needs are being met. And it, it, it's a flow chart and it's a constant flow chart where it's obviously green. That is where progress is made and it tells you the next steps that we would do if it's green. And then if it's red and it's a no, the next steps that we would do, that would be very, very clear. And it's the constant graduated approach. We assess the child. We plan for the child. We put actions in place according to their need. We do it. We deliver it and then we review it. Has there been impact? If it's yes, there's been impact. It's great great impact we go down the green route if no there is no impact we go down the red route this will be available for you on the website so that you can have a look at that so you can see how we as a school will be working in the constant cycle of assess plan do review we'll also put this we'll put this powerpoint on and um, be available for you online as well so you can refer back to it but here you can just see the pyramid of how how the SEM works. You've got your core group of children. That's every single child in the school. Every single child will need some form of differentiation at some point. Now, if the differentiation that is put into place in the classroom after a few few times of a child a teacher trying it and it doesn't work, that's when we might start looking at some short term outcomes and putting them into the monitoring group. That doesn't straight away put them on the SEM register. Put them in there, short term outcomes, a bit of assess, plan, do, review over a short period of time with the high quality teach first, with the advice from myself and Mrs Fraser. And then if progress is made, brilliant, that stays in place. If it doesn't get made at that point, we then start looking at more targeted interventions, more tailored towards the child's need. And then the child will get placed onto the register as SEN support. And then finally, when they're on SEN support, hopefully the extra bits of intervention work and then we stay at that stage at SEN support and we're constantly doing the assess, plan, do review. If, for example, progress is not made and, the, and it is impacting on the child's learning significantly, at that point we would start looking at the route of external agencies being involved, we would look at educational psychologists being involved, possibly speech and language, and then we'd make a referral to the to the local authority for an educational health care plan. In order to do that, that is your very, very, very high needs children. And that is that process can take up to 12 months before an application can be made. At the point at which the 12 months is over when the application is made, the local authority then have 20 weeks 
to issue an educational health care plan if they deem that it meets their criteria. So it's quite a lengthy process. So hence why there is a small number of students with educational health care plans, because it is your greatest need that that have them. So how are we moving forward with obviously making sure that teachers are meeting the needs of your children? So we, what we've been doing since we arrived at the school, we've been meeting with or speaking to on the phone as many parents as possible to put together what we call a student passport. So a number of you will have had that meeting with ourselves. If you haven't, we will get round to you. We've, we've working our way through um, the SEM register so that we can meet with them. This is a constant working document. So as children's needs change, we adapt and amend it. Now, TAs will be working with you eventually on this and they will be delivering this with you. They'll be working through this with you and making sure that this is out to teachers. But primarily it's been done by ourselves to ensure that we get that information to teachers. We get all everything we need to know and then we put together in um, it would help me if you could with the highest and the best types of high quality teach first. The idea behind this is that the teacher can then easily adapt their lessons to meet the needs of your child within the classroom. It's those reasonable adjustments. So that could be anything like give me mind maps, give me time to think, the choice of language they use, visual maps. As, as lots of us know, if it's visual, children understand and learn a lot quicker. We also put in there the information that you think is relevant. So if a child has ADHD, if a child has autism, if a child has dyslexia, it's really important that the teacher knows that. If your child does things that might be impulsive, that might get them in trouble, might might have um, different facial expressions, we obviously put that on because we don't want a child having a consequence for something that is their need. It, they should they shouldn't have that. It should be that that the teacher is aware of what those needs are so that they can address that. We also put on there things that they might find difficult and then we put in there some of the types of interventions that they might receive on a long term or a short term basis. Once we've also gathered reading and maths ages, we use that information too so that the teachers are not put pitching um, work too high if they've got a low reading age or they're not pitching it too low if they've got a higher reading age. And then finally, we put on there the access arrangements that they would have in an exam in a GCSE so it is embedded as a normal working way so that by the time they get to year 11 they can they can have those access arrangements in place within the GCSEs so that we are working on these and these are being shared these are all being written from scratch since we we've, we've started here because it's really really important to give the teachers the tools about your your child we've also introduced something called a send organizer every single teacher has to have this on their desk and what it is it's an easy way for a um, teacher to try and identify some of the challenging challenges that they may face in the classroom so at the top we will share this again on the website for you at the top there are pieces of sort of behaviors that a child might display in the classroom so for example it might say looking out the window tap, tapping their pen swinging on the chair um, refusing to work. Some of the things that they might might be the barriers to their learning. Underneath there are strategies, quick strategies that that teacher can use according to that need. So it, it, we're asking every teacher if they if a child is faced with a barrier, they try at least three high quality teach firsts. The ones that are obviously coloured in coloured in are the easiest ones for the teacher to suddenly adapt and then there's some further strategies at the side but we're really really focusing on the teachers really really adapting their lessons and being quick at adapting when a child is faced with a barrier and sometimes we don't know what that barrier is until they're faced with new new learning. Teachers have also been provided with um, a bank of strategies so I have produced a booklet for them with as many high quality teach first strategies for every single SEN need that I could possibly think of. So they have the tools that they can refer to for their planning. They are aware of who the children are. They are aware of what their needs are so that they can look in this booklet and they can look at SEN in a nutshell, which also gives them the education around 
the around the need so that they they can adapt accordingly so for example there on a hearing impairment it would it says in there that don't stand behind the child make sure the child can see your lips so that they can lip read don't move around when you're teaching because they they can't hear that so there is lots of things in there now i know that teachers are using these because um i've been around a number of lessons and i have seen them referring to to the booklet and referring to the, the send organizer so some of the things that we are moving towards so we are very much about improving the interventions that we've got here we are training the tas um, to have evidence-based interventions that meet the needs of the children it's really really important that if we are delivering an intervention that it then has impact in the classroom what we want is we want them to be able to take that and and apply it right the way across the curriculum so that they can make the best progress that they are capable of so we're currently in the process of training them in, in the interventions so interventions are slowly starting as and when the tas have become appropriately trained to deliver those interventions We've also brought in new assessment tools to identify the SEN needs appropriately. That includes um, Vauxhall training so that we can identify the social and emotional needs. We've brought in brand new reading tests that don't just look at sight reading and whether a child can decode and, and read phonetically. We are looking at the comprehension behind it. We've brought in maths tests. We're also bringing in something called strengths and difficulties. We have um, speech, language and communication assessments. These are things that work alongside what the educational psychologists are using so that we can make early identification and, and effectively um, deliver the right, the right type of interventions or put the right plans in place for your child. Um, we're improving the training for the, the teaching staff. Um, to understand every single SEN need is very, very difficult for a teacher. So we are improving that. There'll be more and more and more um, uh, training sessions going on throughout the year. I am delivering small training session every three weeks to teachers so that we can really, really raise the profile of SEN. Just because a child has special educational need does not mean they cannot make progress. They can make as much progress as anybody else. It's about putting that extra work in and for teachers to understand what the need is. We are also going to be improving the communication between um, both teachers and parents. We are communicating. We've got um, a new referral system for the teachers to refer. That's very easy for them to use. It's uh, using Microsoft Forms, click buttons. Uh, they can show what they've already done, what's not working, what is working. And then we want to improve the communication with parents. So if you contact us, we, we will endeavour to, to respond to you within 24 hours of you contacting us. Hopefully it'll be within the same the same day. We're very much about the children being at the centre of this. The longer we leave things, the more the child is suffering. And we really, really want to make sure that the child gets the best from us. And then we are also going to be looking in the long term at looking at an alternative curriculum to try and close some of the gaps that some children have within the learning. More around children with learning needs and adapting the curriculum to meet the needs of the children rather than the children trying to meet the needs of the curriculum. So these are some of the things that we're looking to do over the next few weeks. If any of you would like to contact us, would like a meeting in earlier than we have got, or we haven't contacted you yet just because we haven't got through the list please 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 send us an email or contact us at school and we will um organize that meeting and get that passport done we have got a number of them done already and, and parents will be aware of that but we will get through them all so that we can make this more effective for your children thank you very much i hope we see you again in uh, at the meeting in december and um, thank you for your time today thank you